Why do I have an ukulele here? You maybe will find out at the end of this presentation. But why are we here? We are here to celebrate the fact and get ready to give me a big applause. We are ready to we are here to celebrate the fact that I read a book. A book? Yes, I'm able to read. I know that you are surprised, but this is true. I can read. And I did it. And today I'm here to give you a presentation about it. Which book did I read? I read The Clean Coder, the book of uh, the, um, whew, sorry, book of Uncle Bob, a very famous developer in the community. And uh, why did I read it? Well, practically because uh, almost every evening I was in the shower doing this kind of ritual to relieve the stress of my working day. And why I was in this desperate situation. Let's go together. So, the, kid, the clean coder, first of all, explains how to not be treated like a code monkey, or even better, how to not behave like a code monkey. What is it, a code monkey? A code monkey is simply a developer that eats bananas, eats peanuts, and, and does whatever it is told him to do without uh, um, thinking about it uh, too much. And I was quite frustrated because my coding skills are not good enough to be able to deliver whatever uh, my PM uh, asks me. So that's why I was frustrated. But thanks to the um, clean coder, I learned that this is not the trick. The trick, because, and because it is very important to know that, uh, yes, a programmer is not a professional. And what does it mean? It means that a programmer is not a professional. And what does it mean? It means that a programmer is not a professional. This means that you uh, can even deliver the best code ever, but if you uh, are not able to uh, work with others or to uh, make a critical thinking, you are really not a, a professional. So being a professional is something different and needed in order to be a good programmer. But being a good programmer is not enough to be a professional. So you need both half of this, uh, uh, of your role in order to be able to deliver value to the company. Okay, so being a professional is very, very, very important. And how can you be a professional? Well, professionalism is all about taking responsibility. And uh, I really like um, uh, an example with the coffee cup. So I don't know if you noticed, but since May uh, 2017, I have a very nice coffee cup that Casper gave me. And every day I drink coffee in my own coffee cup. And uh, why? Because I like to clean it. Uh, I like to clean after myself. That's normal. When I go in a place, I always try to leave the place in a better state than uh, how I found it. And the same is with the office. How can I trust uh, your clean code if you don't have a clean desk, if you don't have, uh, uh, if you are not able to clean after your coffee cup? So if you have five coffee cup glasses or coffee cups on your desk, hey, maybe you should start to uh, rethink it a little bit. Not because it is bad to have five coffee cups, but that means that you are just a little bit distracted and not um, uh, and you're not caring about the details enough. It's just really taking responsibility. Take responsibility for your own shit and clean after it. It's not uh, rocket science. So that's first tip that Uncle Bob gave me. Clean after yourself. Okay. Then, yes, this is something that my craft lead uh, tells me uh, all the time. So let me remove my face. So the what he's saying, what he says is to do no harm. What does it mean? Do no harm means that the code read, written should have no bugs. So let me tell you a thing. Uh, not many days ago, so I should not talk about this, but I'm sharing because it is important to share everything. Um, a few days ago, I delivered uh, on production a change in the CSS that made our logo invisible, totally invisible. Of course, it was a bug. I considered it a feature, but uh, I had to fix it after, uh, after I delivered, delivered it. So, of course, my code should have no bugs, but 
things, um, bugs can happen. So the important thing is that you take responsibility of your bugs and then fix them as soon as, uh, as possible, as soon as somebody flags that to you, okay? But uh, the code written should have no bugs means also that um, you, uh, you should try to improve. So now I made the logo invisible, Next time, I will try to make invisible something else and not the logo anymore. So the logo now uh, has been implemented in a way in which it is very difficult to make it invisible. So fail, iterate and continue. So don't be afraid to make errors. And another thing, do no harm means that the QA should find nothing. When you send something to QA means that you are um, confident that the code you are delivering is ready to go to production okay and last but not the least you should you must know that it works eh? so you can know that it works only if uh, all the code it is tested okay so write your test test by yourself and uh, aim to don't deliver bugs that's easy so yeah what does it mean to be a professional. Okay, this is a huge topic, really a huge topic. So I will talk about this for a few minutes. So I'm starting with the estimations because for me are always the most difficult part and Uncle Bob uh, gave me a wonderful idea. So why do you need to provide only one estimation when the life is much, much more difficult than this? You should provide three, uh, three estimation a optimistic estimate, a nominal estimate, and a pessimistic estimate. And for me, it is uh, uh, it is very fun because uh, in the example that I wrote here in uh, this presentation, uh, we have the optimistic estimate. So if everything goes as planned and nothing uh, uh, came into the way, we could uh, optimistically estimate for a specific task two days. Nominal estimate, so what what will happen really? So you know that two days is too optimistic, so probably it will take you three days. And what if everything goes wrong? What if, I don't know, uh, the app, uh, you cannot build the app on your computer, your computer gets fired, or I don't know. Worst uh, possible case, it will take 10 days. So thanks to a very uh, thanks to this uh, formula that I'm not uh, able to explain, so I'm trying to cover it with my hand. I'm not able to explain this formula, but anyway, uh, Uncle Bob says the reality is always something between the optimistic estimate and the pessimistic estimate. Hopefully, more toward the nominal estimate. So between two days that was the optimistic, 10 days was the pessimistic, and three was the nominal, the end result in this case will be four days. So how do I use it? Uh, I simply add two days to my op optimistic estimate because I know that I always need at least two days for review. So this way of uh, estimate things, uh, it is helping me and it is more or less working. Uh, but of course, it's, it is not science. It's, I guess okay so anyway it is very important to remember that if you provide three estimates you're providing a uh, something that is more connected with reality and not something that is only in your mind yeah be a professional <laughs> learn how to say no because the only way to be able to say yes is to be able to understand when it is the moment to say no. So saying yes is a commitment and commit to something that you're not you're not sure of is unprofessional. So in those cases, when you are not sure, you should say simply, no, I'm not sure I cannot commit. And uh, I know that uh, saying yes is easy, makes people happy because, oh, yeah, yeah, I will do that. Yeah, 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 of course. But if the thing will never happen, it is, you are scamming the people, you are scamming your colleagues. You are not saying yes, you are, just, you are just pretending that you will do something, but you won't. So don't say yes just to escape an easy situation or a difficult situation. Just 
Saying yes is the easiest way to stop a conversation. Try to be a little bit more conflictual. Try to say no and see what that, uh, what that brings. Because saying no starts a conversation uh, with the stakeholders, with the PM, the other developers. And uh, when people talk, uh, there is creativity. And thanks to the creativity, we can grow and innovate. So the only way to get the right yes is to be unafraid to say no. So say no sometimes. Okay? Good. Let's continue. But when should we say yes and how? Well, as a programmer, because there are so many uh, reasons to say no, we have to be creative in order to be able to say yes, because uh, it is very easy to find a reason to say no to a specific kind of implementation or to a specific task. But we are professionals, so we should take responsibility for our things and we should, we should also be willing to uh, give value to the company. So when we say yes, we, we mean it. We are really committing to something. So when uh, we say yes, we say, I will do this by then. So we, uh, we explain clearly which task we are going to do. So I will do... So I will clean my coffee cup by 10 o'clock because by that time I know that I will have already drank my coffee, you know? So you should uh, uh, avoid some verbs like need, should, oh, I need to, to clean my cup, oh, I should clean my cup, and in the meantime you have four more on your desk, or I hope my cup will be cleaned. No, you have to clean your cup. Oh, let's, let's clean the cup. Yes, let's clean the cap about one. Okay, so I will clean my cap by 10 o'clock. And remember, if if the water is uh, not, um, if there is no water, or if there is no way to clean your cap, remember that there is always, always, always a way to clean your cap. <laughs> there is always something that you can do. It you are, you are always in control of at least one part of your process. So um, try to think about which parts of your process you can control and what things you can deliver. So, for example, with the example of the coffee cup, if there is no water, you can use a towel. If there is no towel, you can use some drinking water and clean it with that or some boiling water. Anyway, there is always something that you can do. Uh, to make an example uh, more connected to reality, if you cannot release to production, you can at least release to staging. And if you cannot release to staging, you can at least have, have uh, your branch ma merged on master. And if you cannot merge on master, you can at least have your branch reviewed and all the green checks uh, approved. And if you cannot have all your branch reviewed and all the green checks, you can uh, at least have done everything possible and sent that to review. You know, there is always something that you are in control uh, with. So use that in order to be able to say a creative yes. And uh, take full responsibility. This is what I just said. So there is always something that you are in control of and that you can commit to. So responsibility is a heavy responsibility. Why? Because when you uh, commit to something, uh, you know that you can bring that to, th to an end. So don't be afraid uh, and to commit to things. And if you cannot commit to a complete epic, it, it is normal. Uh, only, uh, yeah, who, who can complete a, a, a full epic, uh, a commit to a full epic? No one, just a crazy man. But what you can do is to commit to all the single steps that will bring you there to that specific point. So. Commit to little things, clean your coffee cup, and then build on that. That's. Then, an important truth. We didn't become programmer because we like <laughs> to work with people, you know? We are all uh, a little bit sociopath. Not everyone. There are also very, very extrovert people that uh, like to collaborate with others. But uh, yeah, don't lie to each other. I love to work with my computer. That's why I recorded the presentation rather than doing it live, you know? So I don't really like you, even if you are here 
listening to me. No, I'm joking, uh, I like everyone. But uh, programming is uh, all about uh, um, working with people. And we work with the business and with each other. So we need to reach common goals. So it is important that we agree that we have to be here, we have to uh, like each other, and let's make the most of it. Because it could be also fun. So we can pay, play table tennis, we can have lunch, uh, a nice lunch, we can have a spritz planning. You know, there are so many things that we can do together. So not every human is so terrible. And then, this is important too, everyone needs some long time. Because uh, uh, when you need to focus on something very difficult or you need to investigate how to fix an issue, of course, you need to study. You need a relaxed and calm and quiet uh, environment where you can focus. But be careful because not all the tasks are um, good to be done uh, in a, a long way, you know? So um, being unavailable in Slack or or being alone on a corner couch, it can help you to focus, but try to not abuse it, because um, we also need your serendipitous communication, and I love this word, serendipity. So what does it mean? Serendipitous communication is something that I do a lot. I'm often in my desk and I scream, uh, scream, oh fuck, scream against my screen, I move, I, I stand up. What does it mean? This means that all the people around me can feel my frustration or my excitement, my enjoyment, and they can join. I, we can share emotions, we can share feelings, we are not robots, you know? So if we share these feelings and emotions, it is a boost for the team, and it is also a, a boost for me because if I'm very frustrated, I have uh, my, uh, my colleagues that comes to me and helps me um, asking questions and rubber ducking. So, yes, going into the corner couch is a good solution if you need to focus. But if you really are looking for help, the best thing is be between the others, be in the crowd. And also, if you want to be a person that helps the others, be there with them, you know, be be in your in your team island and if you're not in the team island be into your team slack channel and chat with the people share uh, make make a joke in the slack channel share a gif doesn't doesn't matter the important thing is that you show yourself present from time to time so the others know that you are there and that you are excited and that you are working on something that uh, they also will enjoy so for me, it, is, uh, 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 it was a very important uh, lesson, this one, about the serendipitous communication. Then, we are rock stars. Let me, oh, let me see if I can show the, sli the full slide. No, oh, fuck. <coughs> yes. So, we are rock stars. What does it mean? I really like to think about uh, being a programmer like uh, being a musician, you know? So when a musician goes on stage, he doesn't need to learn uh, how, to, how to play. You already did that at home. So it is very important that when you go on the stage, so on your desk at work, you know what to do because you already practiced in your free time. It is very, very, very important to practice because if you cannot use your tools, then you cannot really deliver anything. So of course you can learn at work and at work your skills will improve because the more you play, the better you will. But it is very important that you also do that for fun when you are at home, you know? And uh, yeah, try something new. What does it mean? Try something new, jam with others, break your stuff, doesn't matter. The important thing is that you take your computer and you play with it and you have fun, you enjoy it, you know? Because this is how innovation is, uh, is brought in the world, into the, crackles, into the cracks of uh, legislation there is innovation. So if you don't break the rules, you will never find it. So you have really to break your code, break your computer. I already broke my computer once this year and uh, my, the IT, IT team wasn't really happy about that, but 
it worked. Now I can make video, I can do a lot of stuff. So don't be afraid and also pair up with others because playing alone is not really the same thing like playing with others, you know? So come on, burn your computer, smash your guitar, smash your ukulele, do whatever you want, but play, play and enjoy it. And then let me go away. Yes. Here we have, I have a few questions for we transfer, but I want to show you. So when are we starting our coding dojo? Because if we are musicians, so if we are programmers, we have to be very good with our code. So we need a way to practice. I need exercises. I need moments in which I can exercise uh, my, my skills. And I do that in my free time, of course, but I want to see how my colleagues are doing that. So please let me know when we are starting with this. And will we ever do Code Olympics? Because it would be very fun to, uh, to have some, uh, some coding games to share within each other in order to improve uh, our, our skills. And uh, specifically to WeTransfer, when the winner of the Shark Car Challenge will do an hands-on workshop, because we had an internal coding challenge that uh, has been uh, win by a couple of people, I think, but uh, the solutions have not been shared yet, or at least they have been shared on GitHub, but I would really like to be uh, led in, uh, in how the challenge was tackled by more experienced developers. Why? Because I never participated in any of them, and for me, the biggest uh, uh, issue, the biggest step is the first one. How can I enter the challenge? How can I start delivering something? So it would be nice to do these kind of things uh, together. Say that uh, my time here with you is finished. So I go back to the very first uh, slide. And um, yeah, for today it is everything. Uh, whoa, whoa, I'm also able to move. For today it is everything. Uh, I hope uh, <coughs> I hope you enjoyed my pre this presentation. I hope you are interested in reading the clean coder. And if uh, not, I'm sorry for you. If you have any question, you know how to contact me. I'm here. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.